Some of the best weapons against COVID-19 turn out to be a needle and thread. As Lee Cowan now shows us, pitching in means stitching. To look at it from across Casco Bay, South Freeport, Maine looks as it always does, quaint and virus free. But its silent streets and its deserted docks tell a different story. The threat of COVID-19, even here, can seem as thick as Maine's famous fog. And yet, these are all my upholstery projects. The wind has blown in something else, too. Generosity. Okay, there we go. The black watch plaid that's there was for my son's bedroom. And when he saw everything that was going on, and he's only six, and he said, Mommy, I think somebody needs it more than I do. Bolts of fabric and other materials have been showing up here at North Sales, Maine. All right, that's great. Okay. Ever since word spread that owner Eric Baldwin was no longer stitching sails, but making masks instead. I came into the shop one morning and there was a Ziploc baggie stuffed in the door with about 20 feet of elastic that someone had in their drawer. And, and they said, we hope you can use this. He and his partner, Karen Haley. This is quite a bit. Started making masks long before the CDC recommended wearing them. And now everyone wants to help, including one family that doesn't even know how to sew. She and her husband and daughter have been cutting out pieces at home, and I, I drop a bag off and trade another bag out of, of cut pieces. Cutting Thank away. you. Keeping our social distance. In Middletown, New Jersey, yeah. hope everybody's good. <laughs> it takes a pretty good arm to deliver homemade masks. Just ask Sandy Magner. So this is my pineapple one. She started making them in her spare bedroom for chemotherapy patients who can't get their life-saving treatments without them. And you'd never sewed anything before? No. Now, can you see the confidence I have in myself? She had plenty of confidence in her community, too. I have had, you know, even the strangest people donate uh, money and fabric. Even my ex-husband gave me money for fabric. <laughs> so uh, everyone's pitching in. If defying an epidemic with needle and thread sounds familiar, well, it should. Remember the AIDS Memorial Quilt? It helped raise awareness and a lot of money, a few square feet at a time. During World War II, Uncle Sam's need was needles. Knitting needles, mostly. Knit for Victory campaigns were everywhere, with Eleanor Roosevelt helping set the example for that generation and perhaps today. Do you feel it's a responsibility? Absolutely, I feel it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility and it's an honor. William Hardy is with Carhartt, a company more than a century old now, it helped train Red Cross workers to cut fabric for garments and outfitted our troops during both world wars. So World War I, we made the trousers for our soldiers. Now we move into World War II and most people don't know, we made the jungle suits for the Marines who fought in the Pacific Theater. Now they're back at it, making some 50,000 gowns and two and a half million masks, all for a new kind of frontline warrior. It is emotional for me. Why is it so emotional? I just, I just think it's our time. I think about the sacrifice of those men and women that we're losing every day. You know, this is a way to save some of our folk today and also make those folks proud that gave us the opportunity years and years ago. For some clothing designers though, this is brand new territory. 1,000 masks. Christian Siriano, the one-time Project Runway winner, has now made making masks his new reality. With retail stores shuttered almost indefinitely, storied brands like Ralph Lauren are galloping to the rescue too. How long do you think you guys are gonna keep doing this? Well, we're not gonna stop. There's no way to stop. No one wants to stop. So we'll keep doing this until the problem goes away. David Lauren, Ralph Lauren's son, is chief branding and innovation officer. It didn't matter where you work in our company and at what level, people came together with so much compassion and so much empathy. We have designers and people in our stores literally started making masks on their own. 
Retooling the factory floors took just a week. There's so much willpower and so much good in the world. Everybody wants to support this and wants to do it fast. Even when the outbreak peaks, officials warn the demand for protective equipment will continue. Some wonder if it will ever cease. It just seems like it's going to be very strange if things, you know, ever get back to normal. What's the new normal going to be? Hopefully it's one that doesn't forget that in the worst of times, the best of us comes out. If we're helping anybody in the community or making anybody feel better uh, by either donating their time or, or just feeling like they're contributing in some way, I think that makes us all feel better.